My name's Richard Lee and I run the Stock Radar website. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about the Trend Intensity Indicator. Um, just as we, before we go on, uh, my YouTube channel is now being updated more regularly. Uh, if you subscribe, you will get notified of new videos as they come up. Um, I've redone all my old ones last couple of weeks. I'm adding one today and I'll be adding more in the first few, next few weeks uh, and months. Uh, really to try and help you face to face, talk a bit about Stock Radar, how it works, how it engages with the stock market and how we profit from the stock market. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about uh, passive and active and all this these days. Well, I'm more interested in absolute, which is generating profits year on year. So um, the passive uh, active uh, is a discussion for another day. But here I'm just show you how I generate profits in the stock market regardless of what regardless of what other people do. Okay, so the trend intensity indicator. I'm going to look at the BHP chart today, but you'll find on the website with all my charts now, I have the trend intensity indicator sitting here below the chart uh, with all my average, all my signals that I use, my price trend, my moving averages, volume, and my MACD, uh, which do give me the trend intensity indicator, and I'm about to explain to you today how I do that. Okay, so first off, the trend intensity indicator plays Market sentiment plays a critical role in assessing share price movements. I think we're all fairly well aware of that these days, even more so. Stock Radar delivers a consistent measurement of market sentiment using its unique tool, tool, the Trend Intensity Indicator. The Trend Intensity Indicator combines and weighs four simple tools, trend, volume, moving averages, and momentum, price momentum. This generates an invaluable benchmark that highlights only those stocks with compelling trending qualities and offer the best prospects for sustained price movement. I work on probabilities all the time. This is more likely to happen than that. And if you work those probabilities, you will make profits. So that's what everything I do has probabilities built into it. And the trend intensity indicator is exactly the same. Why sentiment? Well, I think as we all know, sentiment is a powerful force and an understanding is essential to stock successful stock market trading these days. Uh, the difference between a stock's fundamental value, which can vary between analysts, and its share price could be explained as the sentiment factor. Okay, and that's the powerful tool that I'm trying to measure and trying to, uh, trying to put, a, put a value on, if you, say, if you like. So how do we measure sentiment? Well, to initiate analysis using the trend intensity indicator, a definition of price trend is first established. So when a stock goes from lower lows and lower highs, lower lows, and get reverses to higher highs and higher lows, that's where we consider the trend change. Okay, now only weekly reversals are used in my format. I don't, I, I don't use daily data, I find that noise too much. The weekly gives me a far clearer picture uh, of market sentiment. Okay, so once a stock fulfills a simple definition, uh, trend definition, the trend intensity indicator then rates the power of that trend and establishes a clear view of market sentiment towards or against it. The trend intensity indicator calculates a single value from a basket of sentiment indicators. Firstly, trend for direction. Second one is price volume for participation or non-participation by investors. Thirdly, I use moving average to work on averaging probabilities. And four is price momentum to define the power of crowd behaviour, which is a very, very powerful force these days. Okay, so by taking each indicator and breaking it down to the most basic signals, we've, we provide a value for the state each indicator is in. Only one result can occur from each indicator the way I've devised my rules. So for trend is either up or down, which receives a negative or positive value reflecting the state. This is then weighted into the end result, the trend intensity rating. Of the other three indicators, we ask the question, does volume support the rise? What is the, where is the price in relation to the moving average, above or below it? And is price momentum attracting positive crowd behaviour as measured by a price momentum indicator? Crowd behaviour, a very powerful force. Okay, so if we look at the first one, price. Okay, there's only one definition and one value can be true for each indicator, the way I've devised it. So for, for price, the trend is either up or down, and that's fairly simple, although price is the most powerful and most important part of the indicator, so it actually gets the heaviest weighting. 
So between higher highs and higher lows, you get a positive value. With lower lows, lower highs, you get a negative value. Remember, I'm only going long. I'm more interested in the ups rather than the downs because when the downs are happening, I'm simply out of the market. Okay, so now let's look, let's look at volume. Okay, so volume. So if the volume is bullish, which gives it a positive value, you want to see price rising and volume rising. Okay, if price is rising and volume is contracting, which is the second one here, I, I classify that as corrective and uptrend, and although it gets a positive value, it will not be as strong as number one. Okay, and then we've got the two negative values. I won't go through those, you can look at those, but that's the, that's the bearish side. Okay, now, the moving averages. Okay, I use a 28-day exponential moving average. Why do I use an exponential moving average? Primarily because it weights the data. The, the data is weighted more heavily towards the latest data than the earliest data. Okay, uh, so the indicator states, states here, moving average is positive value if the price is above the moving average, which is fairly sensible. And it gets a negative value if it's below the moving average. Okay. Now, there's a little grey area um, here. If it's only closed once above the average or once below, I give that a neutral value. I like to see two closes above or two below to make sure uh, I get a little bit more confirmation again. Just do working those probabilities again. Um, ne never de de uh, decisive, but uh, it's uh, probabilities. Okay. Now, the last one is the price momentum indicator, which I use the moving average convergence divergence indicator. Um, there are different variations, relative strength, momentum, rate of change, um, but I use the MACD. Now, for the MACD, I've defined eight, sorry, eight different states. I'm only concentrate on the, on the buy ones, the positive phase at the moment. Um, uh, to, so, the, each, each of these results will give me a value from positive to less positive, if you like. So the most positive value I'm going to get, firstly I'll define if the MACD is above the zero line, it's going to get a positive value. If it's below, if the lines are below the, the zero line, it's going to get a negative value. And that's where I'm not interested. So I'm more interested in number A here, which is MACD lines are above zero, the histogram is rising and it's also above zero. That is the best rating I can get from the MACD. And that will get, go, be weighted into the index as the most positive value. Now, and you can see the different variations which aren't quite as strong, okay, as we go down there. Now, what happens is now the trend intensity indicator, all these four different values are weighted into the indicator, which can go to a maximum of 10 and a minimum of minus 10. So that just generates a stock rating for each stock between those values of 10 and minus 10. The highest value of 10 reflects a consensus agreement by all indicators that all positive sentiment rules have been satisfied and the stock rates at a maximum on the trend intensity scale. Okay, positive. Now just looking at one, I'm going to go across to the trading centre here and just taken one sector here to give you an example of why, uh, what I've done and why I've done it. Firstly, it is colour coded. Okay, and we'll see the scale in a minute. So for the, for the greens it's a plus 10, and for the negative ten, for negative ten, it's going to be a bright red. So graphically, we can see roughly where we are. Uh, we can see at the moment we're looking at the Thursday before Easter, 2017. The energy sector rates are four on the on the scale. It's not entirely bullish, but it's it's got a couple of strong stocks here. One is Woodside, and one is Origin. And Whitehaven Coal has just just joined the fray again. So we can just see what stocks are rating well and what are the strongest stocks in the sectors. And graphically, we can get a very quick look at that. Okay. Now, so you can go and look at all the other sectors in the trading center and get a fairly quick view of which are the strong, which are the weak, and how strong they are. So a stock that reverses its trend to up and has a trend intensity rating of 4 or greater will qualify as a stock radar stock pick and a stock that has compelling trending qualities and offers the best prospects of price movement. Vice versa on the downside. The, the this breaks the market down into two distinct groups of stocks, one that is trending and one that is not. If it's not trending, I am in cash. If it's trending, I am in equities. Our focus is up on uptrending stocks only. Okay, so here's the scars. We saw that briefly back on the Trading Centre page. But my maximum rating is plus 10, a nice solid green for go. And the minimum rating is a nice big bright red for, uh, for stop or hold or stay out. 
Okay, so that's the scale, and you can see there are degrees of strength. This is the neutral rating, trending down, but this is trending up, so this all qualifies from four up. But this, this area here is far stronger than this. Okay, now, if we go back to the BHP chart we are looking at at the start, I want to break it down so you can see exactly where I went, uh, where I went long, and what, why I changed my decision. Okay, first we know BHP was uh, <coughs> sinking to the depths uh, uh, to, to uh, early 2016, down around $14 here. But we had a sequence of lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Then we've got still got a lower high here, but but then we get a higher low all of a sudden. Okay, warning. Then we suddenly, at this point here, we get high above this period, so we now get a higher high, higher low, and a higher high. That is the trend reverse that I look for in my signals. Okay, but I don't just take it and say, okay, I'm going to buy it. I look for the confirming indicators. So firstly, we have a price trend, a little, little blue arrow here. Price trend reverses, and the price swings above the moving average. That's two positives on that week. We also find here, if we look at the next one, the volume, the little red arrow here, we can see little green bars here, volume has suddenly expanded on that break. So I've got three very positive signals there saying we may well have a trend change on our hands. Okay, I use the moving average to smooth out the histogram. Uh, the histogram can be somewhat erratic sometimes, so this helps me, gives me a smoothing factor to, to read it a little bit better. So here I've got three positive signals uh, out of my four, and finally if I look at the momentum indicator, the MACD, it's often a laggard when we get a trend change. Okay, so just be aware of that. Uh, but here, a couple of months later on, the MACD finally gives confirmation by rising above zero. The histogram rises and the lines are also rising above zero. So from here, you can see the trend intensity in the next bar down, in the next picture down here swings from positive, from negative to positive as we get the trend change and we get the confirming signals from, from moving averages and volume. So there's the, the trend intensity that indicator then, or the rating, then swings along around 5, 6, and then finally here as the MACD starts to kick above zero, we now start to get ratings of 7, 8, 9, and 10, which is very positive, and as you can see here, the price really starts to move higher quickly, uh, much to the surprise of many people, and at the moment, as I said, Thursday before Easter 2017, we've just come back, and we're sitting on the stop loss, and we've just had a bounce in the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, in the last, sorry, sorry, this week, uh, so we bounced off that stop level. But what I'm really focusing on here is the trend intensity indicator and how I use it and how it looks at the price changes and uh, the confirmation of any trend changes. So that's the trend intensity indicator. Uh, look out for more videos coming up. If anybody has any questions, you can always find me at the end of the phone or at the end of an email. Uh, happy to have a chat to anybody about this because um, I'm fairly passionate about trying to help you people um, find out, find a way of fairly simply making, making some consistent profits on the stock market. Okay, so until the next video, thanks for listening, and I'll see you then.